And in today's presentation, I would like to uh, tell you some about my uh, Synthesis Plus project carried out on the um, at the National Museum of Natural History, France. Um, in my research, I work with longhorn beetles or cerambicids. Is one of the uh, most numerous families uh, in the largest order of animals in the world. Um, longhorn beetles uh, include more than uh, between 30 and 40,000 species, described species. And I work with many aspects um, of studies, starting from faunistic and biogeography, um, through taxonomy and phylogeny to ecological issues. Um, I'm many, I mainly in, uh, I'm interested uh, in the Central Asian area, uh, according to the its small its, its broadest uh, definition uh, of UNESCO that includes also Mongolia, uh, some territories of uh, north western China uh, and northern Iran, but of course I, I deal also with with European taxa. Uh, or from uh, territory of Caucasus or Turkey. First of all, uh, the genus Purpuricenus um, belongs to the uh, tribe Trachederini. However, uh, some authors uh, keep continue to use the name uh, Purpuricenini, and it brings uh, a lot of confusion, especially that to the one of the leading authors who um, elaborate the catalog of Palacti Coleoptera um, using this, uh, use this uh, name. Uh, however, the Purpuricenini has been already synonymized uh, with Trachederini by Frangoso et al. in 1987. And uh, this nomenclature is, is uh, valid, and uh, fortunately, it's used by Gerard Tavalkilian in his brilliant database, which now is the, the most common uh, source of taxonomy in long-term beetles. Um, all species, uh, all females in the tribe uh, Trachederini um, uh, are uh, characterized by uh, having brushing organs used to collect um, debris from the bark surface to conceal eggs. And this is only, of course, in females. Um, but these organs are clearly visible. Um, and of course, they uh, they are they are present in all purpuritan species. So the tribe Trachederini is divided to into two uh, subtribes, um, and the subtribe uh, Trachederina uh, contains uh, one uh, one hundred twenty five genera, including most of the palactic genera of Trachederini, and our the discussed genus Purpuricenus. Uh, in this subtribe, there are also um, some uh, most related, closely related to Purpuricenus genera, uh, such as Amaricius here or Anopistes. Uh, I'm especially interested in Anopistes genus, and I'm about to finish the extensive revision of this of this genus. Those species are uh, distributed mostly in Central Asia, with uh, with the, their distribution center in Kazakhstan, Mongolia, uh, and North uh, Western China. Um, there is also a genus Calhanestes. Uh, European and Iranian uh, genus, which is also closely related to the Purpuricenus here. Um, Purpuricenus uh, as a genus uh, was published first in 1821, and the type species is Cerambix, now Purpuricenus caleri. This is a worldwide genus with uh, approximately 80 described species, uh, out of which 50 are distributed in uh, Palearctic realm. And uh, surprisingly, there is no uh, subgenera established to date. 
uh, even uh, despite the clear morphological differences and some obvious species groups uh, in this in the genus Purpuricenus. These beetles belong to the one of the most beautiful uh, palactic long cone beetles. They are also of a moderately sized body size with many diverse forms and colors, also electro patterns. Here you can see some uh, representatives of this uh, genus. Mm, the larvae are uh, developed in, um, of course, in wood, but mostly on the small trees and uh, big shrubs. Uh, like here is a Purpuricenus zarudianus from Iran. It's endemic to Iran, um, and they live in also in such beautiful habitats. The larvae of uh, the genus Purpurcenus um, have a, a peculiar biognomy because some many species, not all, but but there is a big uh, species group, and um, where uh, early instar larvae, girdle uh, or cut a pit uh, over the living branch, um, but they live like here, but they live uh, they live some uh, film. Uh, intact uh, to and that still uh, enables tram, uh, transport of uh, nutrients um, back from the leaves, and the larvae continue feeding on peat on lar uh, of larval branch of a smaller diameter, and later in main branch they return to the array of griddle. Mm, some late instar larvae, more more adult, um, finish the girdle, so the branch is completely cut off. Uh, and that branch fall to the ground and only then after two or three years um, when the larvae are uh, already mature they pupate already in the uh, ground and the um, beetles emerge from the branches laying on the ground um, some species were also considered, uh, considered in the IUCN red list of two species with uh, one species, Purpuricenus nudicolis, um, considered endangered, and another, uh, Purpuricenus nicocles, which is endemic to Cyprus, as a new treatment. However, many species uh, are still evaluated uh, as uh, with data deficient, and they sh for sure they will be later considered. Um, probably near Triton at least, like Purpuricenus grecus, which is very rare and endemic to, to Greece, according to the, to the data we have. Uh, in my Synthesis Plus project, I aim to revise the Purpuricenus taxa from the Western Palearctic region. That means the area between Portugal and Iran and between um, Algeria and uh, southern part of European Russia, the Caucasus. There is about 30 species in this region with 45 subspecies. And of course, the MNHN uh, collection um, houses uh, the biggest number of type um, specimens in this genus. And uh, here you can see some names. Um, also, there are important types of uh, some cinemaized taxa, which uh, it was also important to verify if they uh, indeed uh, were properly cinemaized or still represent uh, valid species. Another interesting um, issue is that uh, the genus Purpuricenus was revealed as paraphyletic. By the um, by, the Korean scientist in I think it was in in 2020. And the, according to the authors and the molecular data, the the genus Purpuricenus is paraphyletic uh, because of the inclusion of Anoplistes and Amaresis. Here, they use only three species from uh, three. Asian species of Purpuricenus and also um, two species of uh, Amaricius and one Anoplistes. Uh, 
However, in our work um, from 20, from last year, uh, where we were uh, focusing on the one anoplista species and its ecotyping variation, we also, in our tree, in our phylogeny, we also um, uh, used some, amar some amaricus and more, most of all, purpuricenus uh, taxa. Um, we added two uh, species from uh, Europe, um, is purpuricenus des fontaine and clary. At, in addition to some of Asian species, and also we we, we received the similar uh, results and um, confirming that the genus Purpuricenus is paraphyletic uh, because of um, inclusion of Amaris, uh, Anoplistes and Amaricus. However, uh, further research, further uh, molecular study need to be conducted because if we use more purpuricenus species representing all these different uh, morpholo morphologically different species groups, it is, it is possible that the, the genus uh, will be re um, recovered as uh, polyphyletic, not paraphyletic. And here I, I can um, I'm showing some morphological uh, heterogeneity uh, within the the genus. Um, there are at least few um, clear species groups. This is the, the the type species of the genus Purpuricenus purpurian scalari, and that should be considered as a, a nominative sub subgenus. But there are also some groups which which clearly deserves. Uh, at least the status of another subgenus. And in case of Purpurcenus deorei uh, and one other species from Iran, it's probably they, sh they should be um, rise to, to even to the new genus. Uh, there is some connection. So the, this, um, this species, these two species uh, actually um, differ considerably from other Purpurcenus species. And at least in electron pattern and uh, pubescence, they are more closely related. They seem more closely related to Calhanestes uh, here. However, of course, the, the, they, they form uh, for sure separate genera, but probably should be in the, this one should be excluded from, from purpuricenus. Also, in the, in the only um, the only available uh, key taxonomical key to taxonomic key to uh, European uh, long cone beetles by Benzel 1995, uh, you can see that the, the purpuricenus, uh, even according to the key morphological key, is not uh, monophyletic because. Um, there is, uh, at least in this key, there is inclusion also of the peridium between the uh, between purpuricenus species and the final the final stages of this key are unfortunately based on the elytra, uh, elytra coloration of uh, the spots on elytra, which can be really uh, variable. So there is not no no good. Um, way to to, to to identify all species of purpuricenus and also i already have some uh, initial gen uh, gen results uh, molecular results it was done for more for anoplistes project but here you can see that um, among anoplistes species the molecular uh, distance in barcoding of course uh, was from more, more than two up to um, five. And here is a difference between Anoplistes species and the last one, the most common Anoplistes halodendri, and those uh, marked in, in yellow species of, of, purpur, of purpuricenus. As you can see, um, in most of cases, of the cases that the, 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 the the distance was more than 20, which is, of course, um, seems proper as for different genera. However, in two species, Purpuricenus grecus and Interscapillatus, the distance was considerable, uh, considerably smaller. Uh, it could still mean the, the separate genera, of course, but it also 
and underline that the, these two species presented here are, are far close from the other purpuricenus. And in my opinion, in, it deserves, um, for, of course, for the study and testing more species, but probably that they should be um, arranged in uh, new genus. Uh, also, the, in morphology, uh, especially the Purpuricenus grecus, uh, seems more close, seems more closely related to Anoplistes compared to other Purpuricenus. Um, there is, uh, unfortunately, there are also many taxonomical issues. Mm, uh, Purpuricenus are very attractive, so they are popular in amateur collectors, which uh, some of the, which of course produce great papers, but some introduce uh, a lot of taxonomic uh, chaos due to describing new subspecies, new species based on few specimens that probably represent only represent the uh, individual variability. And they can publish it with so, in some journals without a uh, good revision or without revision at all. So there is no way to 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 stop this procedure. And those uh, taxa uh, then are considered in the in the open catalogs. And uh, of course, most of the authors also they they do not mm, deposit uh, the holotypes in the national museums, but they keep them uh, in the, the private collections, which also which is even more problematic because sometimes they we don't have access to this to these types, and this this is one of the. Um, examples of uh, intricate groups in Purpuricenus is Purpuricenus interscapillatus. And some of those species, uh, subs there is many subspecies uh, different according to different authors, but from six to even 10. And so there is also no, um, there is disagreement between um, specialists uh, dealing with this genus, with this species group, uh, which Taxa should be ranked as subspecies and which as species, but the problem is even wider, I would say, and for sure some of the subspecies shouldn't be even described because they represent the simple um, individual variability, but the, some of the other um, surely represent separate species. And some of them were already um, the, the rank, uh, the status of some of them were already changed. This is an example of uh, one of the, another um, uh, subspecies of Purpuricenus interscapillatus described recently uh, in journal without the revision. As you can see, for the, the differential diagnosis, there is one sentence that the new subspecies uh, has numerous fine erect seta on lateral pronotal surface, and this is the only um, this is the only um, difference. And additionally, the the type uh, specimens of interscapillatus purpuricens inter interscapillatus um, have never been uh, verified. Um, also. Mm, there is a comment uh, on the status rank uh, of the Purpuricenus interscapillatus cornifrons. Um, this species was de described as a separate species. Then, in the revision of Rapuzzi um, in 2014, Rapuzzi and Sana 2014, it was um, changed to the subspecies. Uh, of interscapillatus, however, Danilevsky 2020, without providing any arguments, uh, changed the status uh, for for um, for separate species. And this author, also without additional uh, arguments, decided to restore the, 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 this uh, this taxon as a subspecies. So um, even in the, um, there is a key of for this group. Mm, in the revision of Rapuzzi and Sama. However, as you can see, the whole key is based almost only uh, solely of, uh, on the 
um, black spot characters, the, the, the coloration of a litra, which is really so surprising because um, in our study of anoplistes in Mongolia, um, we, we proved that all of these, there are two species described, anoplistes halodendri, subspecies minutus from Mongolia and anoplistes kozlovi as a different species based on the rather clear difference in, in elytra. However, we will show that there can be almost every variation between specimens. And we, of course, we also did, uh, we checked the uh, whole morphology, including the male uh, terminalia and did some molecular uh, re uh, research. And uh, we showed that there is, this is only one species, Anoplistes halodendri. We synonymized Anoplistes kozlovi with Anoplistes halodendri. And we showed that this is um, probably uh, uh, only um, uh, ecotypic uh, um, differentiation. And both these forms uh, pre represent a different ecotype. This is the desert ecotype with different substrate. On, on the soil, different coloration, and this is the subspecies, which uh, the ecotype soil, which which is um, which occurs only in the rocky slopes, in the similar habitats. But another uh, difficult cases um, include Purpuricenus um, from the Caucasus, from the region of Caucasus. Danilewski recently described Purpurtenus caucasicola, uh, which, as you can see, um, it doesn't differ. And uh, according to the um, another Russian scientist, uh, Alexander Miroshnikov, caucasicola should be synonymized with no caucasicus due to the lack of any difference. However, even no caucasicus was described by Rapuzzi and Sama only as a subspecies of Purpuricenus uh, renivuane. And Badanilevsky um, uh, rises to the um, species level. And uh, to make it even more difficult, there is also Purpuricenus uh, caucasicus. So here was a neo caucasicus and caucasicola. And the caucasicus was described as variation of very pop, uh, common pop, purpuricenus budensis. However, it was later synonymized with purpuricenus caleri subspecies metariesi. And the type or the holotype of uh, budensis caucasicus uh, is housed in the Paris collection. Okay, so that as for, for the broad introduction. And now uh, I would like to tell you about some my uh, work plan. So uh, at the beginning, I checked, uh, I made a general investigation of uh, all boxes with purpuricenus. And uh, by the way, we, it turned out that some boxes are missing from the um, main collection. And we found it in the in separate uh, place in the, in, the, in the same room. But uh, some important species, even some common ones were, were missing. So. Um, we couldn't understand where is the where are other purpuricenus, but it, it turned out that they are on the um, different uh, place. So at the at the end, uh, I think I was able to find more than twenty boxes filled in uh, with uh, purpuricenus specimens, which is huge. It's great not only because of the many important type specimens, but also. Uh, because of uh, the number of specimens, uh, even regular one, uh, also especially those representing rare species, which are absent in many collections. Um, in the next step, I focus on the on verifying the uh, type material, of course. Then I moisture and uh, dissected uh, some crucial specimens, both type specimens and regular specimens. Mm, I try to clean them and remount uh, to, to be able to, to make a more um, a detailed study because no, normally, as I will show in a moment, uh, many specimens are um, the antenna 
and the legs are hidden underneath the body and it's not difficult. They also, there is some uh, debris on, the, on their body and there is no easy to, to study such specimens, but of course it, it requires a lot of uh, preparation. Mm. In the next step, subsequently, I analyzed some uh, male terminalia and used the um, scanning electron microscope to, to see even more details. After that, I um, prepared some uh, stacking images in this photo studio. However, the, um, so some further DNA sequencing um, and of course obtaining fresh and fresh DNA grade specimens is also important to, to, to finish this study. So here you can see some um, boxes with purpurcenus. There is really a lot of specimens and with, especially for Purpitius barbarus, there, there was many synonyms because if the species is variable, variable in the electoral, um, electoral design, uh, there were more um, species described as a separate species, but at the end, of course, they were synonymized. And for some species like here, like Purpuricenus barbarus, uh, the, the Paris collection houses almost all synonyms. So it's great because I don't need to go to another collection to check if all taxa, at least in, in some species, um, are, are correct in my opinion. And here is an example of an old species, uh, specimen. It's not a type, however, it it's, it's represents very rare species from um, I think from Liban, not sure, uh, or oh, from Syria. But here it, it as it looks after cleaning and some remounting. Of course, I was also able to take out the terminalia and then to um, to to make uh, great um, photos, stacked images. You can see it's the same specimen. And uh, thanks to this procedure with mo moisturing and cleaning, of course, I was able to use them um, uh, to, to, to prepare specimens for um, a scanning electron microscope session because we need to put them on the carbon disks, special carbon disks. And um, they need to be, of course, they need to be uh, evenly mounted and, and dry. And I aimed uh, at um, imaging some the same uh, the same uh, segments of body for for all checked species. Of course, there was no the time was not um, there is too many species and too many preparations. So I was able to choose only some representation of this of this genus. However, for those species, I was able to obtain that great. Uh, images. And as for the staking, stacking, uh, there is also great uh, equipment that allows to produce some really nice photos. Here they are uh, presenting some. So these stacked uh, images, um, they are of, of course composed in a separate software from the at least 15 or 20 uh, single layers. So there was like about 20 photos and then the software combined them into one uh, final image, which is sharp from the very top to the bottom. Otherwise we couldn't see uh, all details of a beetle. And as for my uh, preliminary results, um, there is a there are two species closely related species which, according to the common knowledge, to the collectors, they differ only in males uh, in the antennal length. So there are probably no other characters, and the antennal length in females in females are the same. However. 
purpuricenus vahanrui uh, normally has very long antenna and purpuricenus nanus very short. The difference here is clear. They are not types, but they are. I, um, here I chose, um, let's say, the most typical specimens. However, um, the holotype of purpuricenus vahanrui is housed in the Paris collection. Mm, but both antenna are uh, were, were were damaged. So at, at the beginning there was re I told that uh, there are only three segments missing on the right antenna. So I was afraid that the holotype of Vahenrui represent in fact nanos. Of course, Vahenrui was described first, uh, so it, the name would stay as Vahenrui. However, it would miss changing the, the the common opinion but it, it happened that uh, we check and then um, the antenna normally should be a little longer than body but definitely not an atypical as in typical Vahan Rui. and the um, type the same types of purpuricenus nanus are housed in the St. Petersburg collection I received some photos uh, in November and you, you can see that here that the same type of uh, nanus has even shorter uh, antenna as a um, commonly considered nanus. And the, thanks to the many specimens, this, this, these species are uh, distributed in Turkey and in Iran. I think nanus is only in Iran and Bahanrui has a more broad uh, distribution. But uh, I was able to, 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 to find, thanks to many specimens in the collection, that the antenna length is really variable. Uh, in, in, in females, it's always, they are short, but in males or Vahanrui, they can be really long, even longer than in these specimens, but also can be, can uh, extend the body length in two or three segments, as probably in the holotype. And in nanus, from that short antenna in males, they could almost also uh, extend the uh, length of the body length, but by, by one or two segments. And then it makes it almost um, indifferent that they move from the from Vahanrui. So it's very peculiar, and it's probably that the purpuricens nanus should be synonymized with Vahanrui. Um, and but still, it's difficult to uh, to explain why in this species the the variability in length antenna is that high, because it's normal that some small males, especially small males in other species, has extremely short antenna, but only because probably because of the poor condition uh, during the larval stage. However, uh, in big specimens, the, the antenna are normally of the similar length. But here, even big specimens can have very short antenna, and this is very interesting and required for the study. But but probably this is only is all one species. And thanks to the um, scanning electron microscope uh, session, I was able also to 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 see much more details because the the, the problem in purpuricenus and some other. Uh, similar genera as Anoplistes uh, is the electrode pattern. So our eyes is, um, let's say, make some decision based on the, the pattern. And this is really confusing. And in SEM, of course, you cannot see colors. And here we can see so many characters, so many details. And some two beetles, which are clearly is similar because of the similar pattern can be very different in uh, when we see them without the uh, both without colors and with of course uh, under the much uh, higher magnification the even the structure of the in this case is a structure of electron uh, the microsculpture can be really different sometimes is more like um, small holes and sometimes uh, girdles and the, so the structure is 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 really different here mm, you can see some this is a scutellum so the place where the elytra uh, are combined 
Of course, the, the shape of scutellum is variable. So some people use it as a morphological character, but they can be, uh, at least in some groups I have studied, they can be really variable, but some uh, the, the papestans and the um, uh, other characters of the scutellum, not the shape, but as you can see, it can be clearly different. Even if the beetle seems similar uh, outside the, this technology and outside the good uh, magnification. Also, this is very interesting part. I was able to, to, to notice that uh, some of these uh, black uh, spots, electron black spots, are made by the pigmentation itself. So it's not that the, the, um, uh, the pubescence electron hairs make these uh, spots, but as you can see, there are no difference even if the beetle look like this. However, in some species, they, the, 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 the elytra spot looks similar, but it's made in very in different way. So it's made here by, by, the, um, by hairs. As you can see the rest of elytra here, so the red spot, space here is without hairs at all or with very, um, with very uh, small hairs. However, here are very um, peculiar and uh, considerable uh, pubescence and this creates the, the spot. And here you can see they are quite long and, um, and dense hairs, but there is no any, uh, area of the spots uh, visible in some technology. Um, here is another example of Purpuritans barbarus with the spot which is not visible in uh, SIM technology and uh, Purpuritanus robusticolis. It is the standard image, but you can clearly see the same story as in Purpuritanus that's one tiny. Um, I also tried to, um, to study some um, maze terminalia in this technology. And also here I was able to find, uh, as I mentioned, I couldn't uh, test um, too many species, but from these eight or 10, uh, even in, in these groups, uh, some difference are, are obvious. And like here, so for example, the Purpuritan of Hanrui Robusticolis are normally similar. They are different in coloration, but they are similar in morphology and the, the image genitalia are also very similar, but in some other groups, the genitalia looks totally different. And that is another clue um, that this, uh, that the genus Purpuritanus should be probably divided into at least three or four uh, subgenera. And of, of course, I would like to thank you to the Synthesis Plus, uh, to the Synthesis Project and to the to my host, Olivier and Gerard, Stefan and other um, people from the um, collection, from the Colopta department who, was, um, who were very friendly and helped me a lot. Um, and also, to, of course, to Jonathan, uh, as my synthesis host for the possibility and for great organization. Uh, I stayed almost three weeks in Paris and everything was, was great. And so thank you very much for your attention. I would be happy to answer your questions. for uh, your talk. Uh, the the serambicide, the serambicide uh, is quite beautiful, and uh, I have the feeling that working on this group uh, allowed to do field work in beautiful era. So um, that could uh, give some, um, uh, how do you say, how can I say that, uh, inspiration. <laughs> and uh, I understand that we can get lost in the current taxonomy of this group, so a uh, lot of work to do. Sure. Um, <laughs> Are there uh, any questions, Julien? Yes, thank you. Uh, just a, a very technical question about the Corsicus uh, subspecies of Caeleri. 
uh, you know that some uh, I don't know if they are Czech uh, colleagues uh, describe a subspecies from Corsica. What is your opinion about the validity of this uh, subspecies? <laughs> Well, uh, I think it's even worse that uh, in that species which I mentioned before, that person who did this is is, is very specific, and yeah, so it's only the this is the the simple variability, uh, probably the the, the simple uh, inter species variability. It's all I think it was all described based on the coloration they are without the spot, but even. Even in this character, there is already uh, some uh, not subspecies but variation that is known without the. Okay. Uh, just to mention, I agree with you because I barcoded some specimens, uh, fresh specimens oh. from Corsica, and they are exactly the same as in uh, mainland uh, France. So there is no no uh, like zero zero difference in this zero sense? zero different. It's. Uh, it's in the middle of the tree of uh, other Kaileri specimens. Sure, Just that, let you know. <laughs> okay, great, good to know. Have you barcoded any other Purpuricenus? I have a Globulicolis also, Kaileri from France, and that's all so far. <laughs> I can share them with you. <laughs> that would be great. I, I, I need to finish some uh, other projects, but I'm working on purpuricens and I for sure I will be able interested to to, to collect as many barcodes of purpuricens as possible. Okay. Thank you. Are there um, other questions? Okay, I think um, everything's fine. Um, once again, Jankuye uh, Barsoler for your uh, presentation. Um, we were very happy to welcome you in Paris and uh, we wish you all the best for uh, the next step. And uh, if you come back in Paris, please call me to have a drink maybe <laughs> or something like that. Don't hesitate to do that. Merci beaucoup. Of course, I will be happy to visit your collection in the future, and I'm pretty sure I, I will. Hopefully, in the synthesis, in the framework of synthesis project, if not from other grant or from private um, funds. But I hope we will meet uh, again in Paris.